Hi, I'm Steve Pike, and I am the founding director of Urban Islands Project. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Um, the, the question that I want to address today is, what, what do we know about planting in cities? And uh, I want to start with the question, why do we even need to think about cities? Um, uh, a lot of people kind of assume cities are covered because most cities are surrounded by churches, but um, if you look at the history of what's happened in the world, uh, in 1905, only 5% of people on the planet actually lived in an urban setting or in a city, which means that 95% lived in, in a rural community in, in 1905. By 2007, over half of the world's population lived in an urban community. And so there's been this huge mega shift from uh, people growing up and, and living their lives out in a rural community to people living in urban communities. Um, and so there, there's, there's just this huge shift towards urban living, but at the same time over the last 50 to 60 years, the church has been moving in the opposite direction. And so while the people have been moving into the cities and into urban contexts, the church has been moving out to the uh, suburbs and to the rural communities. And so uh, the, the problem that that creates is that uh, as the density of the population goes up, the presence of the church goes down. And um, uh, so that means there's more people, but there's less church. And here's why that's a problem. Um, what I've discovered is that cities are different than I thought, than you probably think. Um, I've grown up as a church person in the suburbs, and, um, but in the last couple of years, I've moved into living in a downtown city, uh, or the downtown part of a city. And I've discovered that uh, it's quite different than I thought. And one of the biggest discoveries was I think I had, and most people I talked to have a idea that cities are mostly composed of what people might label down and outers, folks that are on the lower end of the economic scale that are kind of struggling to make uh, their, their lives work. Um, and so a lot of times when people think about urban ministry or ministry in a downtown area, they're thinking about compassion uh, kind of ministries, which are definitely needed, and there are people that fit that description in urban centers. But um, uh, the reality is cities are becoming more and more the place where the movers and shakers live, where the people who are inventing the future live. And uh, the problem, the challenge that that creates is that you have increasingly people who are inventing the future living together in close proximity in city environments but the people of the church are not there. Uh, we're not there where they're at. And so we're not part of the conversation about what the future looks like, which leads to all kinds of challenges for the greater culture. Because if culture is being invented in the city, but the church is not part of that conversation, that puts us in a reactionary role. We're reacting to culture that's already been created instead of being part of the conversation about what culture is going to be. Uh, and, the, and the voice of the church needs to be restored to that. So that's the, that's the real strategic problem when you have more people, less church, and the people, the, the more people that are living in the cities are creating the culture, but the church is not part of that. Um, it becomes a huge problem because it affects everybody, not just the people in the city. It affects people in the suburbs. It affects people in rural communities. So um, what do we do about that? Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's the answer? And, you know, a lot of people would say, well, you know, actually there are a lot of efforts to start churches in the cities, and that's true. So let's think about that. Why is this still a problem? Because there are, it's not like I'm the first person to step up and say we need to move to the cities. Um, why are there still a problem? Why is this still a problem? And the answer is that basically we're, what we're doing right now is still resulting in more people, less church. And so what we're doing right now would be probably uh, fairly summarized in four approaches. 
or excuse me, five approaches. Number one is what I call the pioneer, the lone pioneer person that goes in there, uh, a, a person and, and their family move into the city and say, hey, we're going to take this city for Jesus. And, you know, organizations get behind them, they send them in there. And th those look like all different kinds of things. They can be compassion ministries or missional communities or whatever. But by and large, a lot of these folks just simply are by themselves. They're sent by some sending organization that's based out in the suburbs. And, you know, there's this, there, there's money invested and there's uh, a, a lot of energy around that. But at the end of the day, man, it's just hard. It's difficult, it's lonely, and it's especially tough on families. So while that's the most common thing, the bottom line is um, it's really hard and difficult and people aren't lining up to do it. The second approach is what I call the one-hit wonders. And those are the guys, those are, they start out as lone pioneers, but they end up, they've got a unique and rare set of giftings that allows them to be extremely effective and successful in the city context. And so, you, you, you know, you have, you have people like Jim Cimbala or individuals like that that are these outstanding, amazing leaders that are effectively planting big, influential churches in the city context. But the challenge there is that those people and the, those gifts are so rare that there's just not enough of them. We need more of them, but it's really, they're, they're, they're not something that is just, uh, you're able to find all over the place. So those are rare and, and again, um, uh, while very effective and very powerful, there's just not enough. And one that's sort of related to that is what I call the celebrity church. And that's where a, an, a person uh, that has uh, a lot of notoriety or an organization that is well known comes into a city and gathers a lot of folks in a location that's down in the city. And again, the challenge there is uh, there's just not enough of those. Uh, there, there, once, uh, once a large organization, say like a Hillsong or somebody like Rick Warren or somebody moves into a city and, or, or starts a, a, a church in a city, it's difficult for that to be re reproduced again because uh, of the nature of how that started. So, so the, the challenge with the one-hit wonders in the celebrity churches is that they're not reproducible. It's difficult to reproduce them. Um, another approach that is really common in the cities is, is what I would call the ethnic-focused churches where there's usually every city has large groups of people that are perhaps first generation or recent immigrants to the United States and they all end up kind of living in the same neighborhood and so someone starts a church and that church uh, worships in the language of the nation of origin of, of the majority of people that are part of that uh, or from that that nation and um, one those are those are definitely important those are definitely needed but obviously they're not going to be able to reach the general population because they're they're uh, worshiping in a language that most people in the greater population aren't familiar with. And then there's what I would say are the faithful remnant. You know, the, the challenge that occurred was uh, the churches kind of moved out of the cities as the cities went through turmoil and, and things. And um, so that's part of the reason why the church isn't in the city is, is we moved out of the city. But some churches stayed there. Some churches have, have uh, put their roots down, they've got buildings, they've got presence, they've got li literally physical property in the cities. And so um, those folks are still there. And, uh, you know, the challenge there is just like in the rest of the church, about 80% of those churches are, are struggling and maybe even higher than that, but, it, but at least 80% are in plateau or decline. And so, um, you know, the bottom line is when everything is said and done, all five of those approaches are being done. And at the end of the day, there's still, we still have the situation that we have where there just aren't enough churches for the people. So what's the solution? Um, you know, if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, we're going to get the same results, which is more people, less church. So how do we overcome this? What's the solution? Well, our Urban Islands Project that I lead is um, an interdenominational approach to starting clusters of churches in large cities in the in the. Um, uh, inside the city limits of large cities all at the same time. So currently we're active in Denver. We have a cluster of churches forming in Denver, uh, in St. Louis, in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and in Brooklyn, Queens. 
Um, and so we've learned some stuff as we've started clusters of churches uh, composed of, uh, with a cohort composed of different sending organizations and going into the city at the same time um, solves a lot of problems. In fact, usually at any given time there's a group of sending organizations that are trying to send these lone pioneers or try to help the celebrity church or the one hit wonders get started and all of that's great but but the question is what if what if we figured out a way for them to be do it together in, in a way that doesn't take away from the distinctiveness of who they are and that's kind of where the idea for Urban Islands was born. So here's some of the things that we've learned that are different in when you go plant in the city versus planting in the suburbs, which we're actually doing pretty good at. Um, number one, we've learned that going into the city, it's really important to have what we call a neighborhood focus versus a regional focus. And uh, what I mean by that is your, your normal kind of normal church planting strategy is you basically find your best location you possibly can and you uh, advertise and you reach out and you, you make people aware of the fact that you're starting a church and you assume that people are gonna, gonna drive to you, they're gonna come to you from far and wide and that from this large population around you, you're gonna draw people from all over the place. Um, and, and then if that church grows and, and the facility isn't big enough, you move to a different neighborhood or a different part of the city and everybody follows you there. That's, that's kind of what is, is normal. Um, and and the, the challenges in the cities, the way cities are organized, they're more like a thousand islands smashed together. They're, each little community has its identity and they like local stuff and they like local businesses and, and all that kind of stuff. And so what we say is number one, one of the things we're discovering is how important it is for us to go into these cities uh, a neighborhood at a time. Instead of standing on a platform and saying we're going to take this city for Jesus, it's important for the church starter to stand on a street corner and say we're going to love this neighborhood in a way that brings the presence of the gospel here in a very tangible and clear way for people. Um, and so that's number one is neighborhood focus versus a regional focus. Regional's not wrong, it's just not as effective in the city and that's one of the key differences. Another key difference is the, the typical church plant starts with attractional and includes in incarnational. So attractional comes first, which is uh, very effective, again, in most suburban settings. But in the city, you, get, you have to start with incarnational and include attractional. So incarnational is first. And what, what we mean by incarnational is moving into the neighborhood and intentionally uh, and very uh, aggressively in an appropriate way, building relationships with people who are um, in that actual neighborhood. That's a, a very important component in, in city neighborhoods uh, because people there um, are not really looking for a church, generally speaking. Most cities are way more secular than typical suburban settings or rural communities. And so the idea of church is not even on their radar screen. And the first, they're not going to respond to an attractional invitation first. They need to have a person that they're connected. They need to be introduced to the church through a person. And so incarnational uh, approaches are much more effective in cities. And so that needs to be the first. And of course there is a place always for attractional. Number three is um, but the typical suburban planting approach uh, relies on an assumption that you're going to be able to fund it through tithes and offerings. And so the idea is just gather a critical mass of people, get enough people together that their tithes and offerings will actually allow the church to be able to function. And in the city, that's more difficult to, you can't really operate with that assumption. You need to have a kind of a diversified funding strategy that, that includes tithes and offerings, but it also includes perhaps some donor-based uh, ideas where you, 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 have, you invite people to support you over a period of time as the church is starting up. It involves bivocational. It involves um, uh, other, other approaches like that. Um, and so creative funding is really important. And then there's the quick start. Uh, the other thing, that, another, the fourth thing that's different is quick start versus long haul. Uh, it's possible to think quick start in the city, or excuse me, in the suburbs, but in the city you got to think long haul. So it's just going to take longer to get things going, and that's an important thing to have as a part of your assumptions. And then the final thing that's really different is you can kind of get away with being solo in the suburbs, but you've got to go 
as a cohort in the cities, or you, it's much more powerful to go as a cohort in the cities. And really, that just means uh, finding other people who are doing the same thing, whether they're from your tribe or not, and being able to, to walk the journey with them. And so, um, you know, this big megatrend that I talked about to begin with is happening. In fact, the scripture actually says, tells us that the story of man started in a garden, but it's going to end in a city. And the church needs to kind of lead the way back into the city. We need to be part of the conversation, part of shaping the future. And that's my challenge to you is I hope that you as a church, your ministry, your organization will consider how you can have a part in increasing the presence of the church in the city.